World War II codebreaker Alan Turing was named the greatest person of the 20th century by the Icons TV show on BBC Two last night. Yes, after a public vote, the scientist came ahead of the likes of Nelson Mandela and Muhammad Ali. It's uh, had a bit of criticism, though, the programme, uh, both for the lack of women in the final and for also treating history like a talent show. Should history be a talent show? Well, I'd, I'm a historian by trade, you see. So you... Yeah. I, I, I feel quite strongly that it shouldn't be just about well, individuals. Anyway. In a moment, we'll talk to two other historians as well. Uh, first, let's have a look at the moment the winner was announced. It is time to reveal who you believe to be the greatest person of the 20th century. And that person is... Alan Turing. He was a man who worked almost entirely in secret, who received little credit for cracking the Nazi codes and shorming the war, and who died having been branded a criminal. Today, He's the most celebrated figure of the 20th century. The father of computing, war hero and genius, Alan Turing. Well, let's uh, pick up some of those thoughts with uh, Rebecca Adil, um, who's here with us. Morning to you. Morning. And Kate Williams, um, as well, joins us um, from down the line from London. Uh, thanks both. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, before we get on to this whether history should be a talent show question, Rebecca, was he a deserving winner? Oh, they were all deserving winners, of course. I mean, it's, you know, this talent show question is a, a very important one, but um, they all achieved remarkable things in their lifetimes and in the 20th century. So, yes, they're all deserving of, of accolades. On the talent show side of it, is it because it's sort of reducing the, the scope and the scale of history to sort of specific individuals? I mean, you're sort of ignoring quite a bit of other stuff that's out there as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, by reducing it in this way, you're kind of extracting individuals from the wider... Um, world that they were living within, um, you're ignore, ignoring some of the things that they were pushing against and fighting against, um, ignoring the shoulders that they were standing upon to make these great achievements as well. Um, and I do think it just, it, as you say, it reduces, it, it reduces history into a kind of dumbed down great man, great woman history, which I don't think is helpful for the people that are even on the list. Um, let's talk to Kate. I want to ask you that similar question. Alan Turing, was he a deserving winner? Oh, incredibly so. And it's very interesting, isn't it? Because we had these uh, big series, Great Britons, uh, back in 2002. And he was in the 100, but didn't get a look in in the top 10. Uh, Winston Churchill was number one. But now it really shows the changes that we've made and how we really see what a great scientist he was, what a great mathematician he was, how much he did for the war, but also how he was excluded and ignored. Uh, you know, he was prosecuted for homosexuality and later died. We, we think he committed suicide and wasn't given a posthumous pardon by the Queen until 2013 so really he was a man a great man who also suffered so much and I, I think it's you know absolutely vital and very important and he's a very worthy winner and let's hope we see him on a banknote as well uh, what about the fact that uh, we mentioned this in the introduction as well I mean, uh, th there were no women in that final six uh, you know, it's a public vote so you can't sort of force women onto the list Kate but it is how does that sort of reflect do you think Yes, well, the women were 43% of the actual icon makeup, but yeah, as you say, the public vote did not uh, put them there in the end. And there were obviously great women in, in that list. There was the great, there was Marie Curie. There were such so many significant women there. Marilyn Monroe. There were lots of people saying, "Why is it Bowie and not Marilyn Monroe?" Margaret Thatcher was included. So many women who have had a significant impact on our history in the 20th century. There are many others, I might say, who were excluded. Uh, Anne Frank's, uh, Rosa Parks. We, there are many women who also could have been mentioned Mother Teresa uh, and uh, you know we didn't really have anyone on the list who was from the Indian subcontinent at all but um, I, I do think that there were obviously there were more than have been in, in lists before and simply it is a very interesting fact to me that the public did not vote any of them through that simply they were beaten over and over again and we had this all-male final that there was a lot of conversation about on social media in reviews and it does seem perhaps you know 20 years ago no one would have been an eyelid but now it does seem very odd and people and people think that just isn't representative of the contribution of women in the 20th century um and i suppose i mean i suppose in some ways rebecca because i'm looking at what the there were sort of categories and it does that in some ways rule 
other people out. You know, we had artists, Pablo Picasso won that, sports star, entertainers, scientists, explorers, leaders. I mean, there are so many other things that people are very good at. Aren't they? Yeah, I agree. And I think a lot of the people could have been in multiple categories as yeah. well. I mean, um, Jane Goodall could easily have been put into the science category as well. Um, so I think that's absolutely right. But then also we have to assess what it is that we're actually looking for, because are, are we looking for um, positive influence and impact? And if we are doing that, why are we, why are we looking for that? Is that? It says more about us in the present day, that I think, than the people that were entered into this um, competition. Um, and I also wonder as well, if any of these figures had been alive today, would they have even wanted to have been on a list like this, to be, you know, pitting Muhammad Ali and um, Gertrude Bell? It doesn't make any sense, really. So um, it's, uh, it, it's a really curious thing for me. Is it, it's part of, probably part of our list obsession, isn't it? And having to have something at, or somebody at the top of something we can then discuss. But I suppose the positive side of this case, we are, here we are, um, discussing great historical figures for uh, a couple of minutes on, on BBC Breakfast. And, and there was a live programme on BBC Two last night and it has been part of the sort of public debate, hasn't it? Yes, and I do think, you know, people do like to vote and people do like to interact. And I do think that there has been a lot of calls for Alan Turing for his, to be recognised as the great man that he was. And I, I'm really very heartened that he was, he was the winner. He beat out everyone else, including Churchill, who, of course, won Great Britain's in 2002. And, it, I, you know, it does, you know, I absolutely see what Rebecca was saying, that, you know, we make the sort of top ten and people are contrasted with each other and that many great man, men and women in history, they stand on the shoulders of others and others assist them but uh, it does it, I do think it's quite heartening that we are discussing history and that you know in the end such a great man won um, what about that Rebecca is you know at least this bit brings you know a big discussion people that perhaps are that some people may not have heard about before have you know been brought to a much wider audience I think that's an absolutely fair point and um, yeah I, I agree it's great that we're discussing it but you you mentioned that there are people that we've not heard about before some, most of these yeah. yet most of these figures I do think um, a lot of the population will have heard of and it's perpetuating this cycle of great figures and great people so I think it would have been great to have seen some genuinely lesser known people on, on this list if we are going to go down the list route and um, to learn about people that we, we may not have known so much about before Maybe and also have, they have hidden heroes perhaps <laughs> hidden heroes with Louise Minchin <laughs> doesn't have to be with me but that I mean I suppose what you've both been saying is you know who has helped them to be in the position that they've yeah. been in these amazing people I think so and also the nuance that you know some of these figures Gertrude Bell I mentioned before we can't we shouldn't place people on these heroine and, and um, heroes mm. pedestals because Gertrude Bell like most of the figures on the list were, was a complex character she was anti anti female suffrage for example which wasn't mentioned at all in the program uh, very interesting talking to you both um, thank you very much indeed Rebecca and also Kate Williams thank you both for your time thank you standing